G'day, my name is Ben, and like many of you guys watching, I'm a veteran. I spent 14 years in defence as a medic, 8 years full-time in Australia, 6 years as a reservist. Now I know a lot of my uh, routine viewers, this is an entirely different thing, and I understand. Uh, today, this is not about huh, anything medieval, but I've been asked to put this together from some friends of mine about my thoughts for those who are leaving defence, for those who wish to submit claims to the Department of Veterans Affairs, DVA, and some of the things that are going to go around that. So I guess um, this is my thoughts. Now, obviously different people from different parts of the Army, different parts of defence, are going to have different experiences and that's entirely okay. Please leave your thoughts and comments below. I'm very interested in hearing from you. Okay, ideally, you want to think about leaving defence around about two or three years before you actually do. Plan your exit. So there's a few things that we need to consider around this. Number one, um, what can defence give you, in other words, courses, that's going to help you in the outside world? That's a really important thing. Defence takes a lot from you as an individual, as a member of defence. Uh, you are entitled to try and get a few things back. Now, I've written down some notes and I want to refer to these, if that's okay. I would really suggest you put together a vision of what it is you want to be when you leave defence. Many of you will have served 10, 12, 14 years. Uh, that's a big length of time and it means that you're a very, very different person now to the person you were when you first enlisted. So, vision. What does that mean? Okay, uh, where do you want to go? Where do you want to discharge to? Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, what support mechanisms do you have in place or are there locally that are going to, going to help you? So lots of you leaving defence are going to leave with physical injuries, mental health uh, injuries and illnesses, uh, all these kinds of challenges. Now there needs to be some support networks around you which are going to help you through some of the tough times that you're going to experience. Now I know there's a lot of people out there that are far younger than I am who are going to think, you know what, I'm not going to go through that. Um, I'm young, I'm tough, I'm all that kind of stuff. Uh, yes, you probably are, um, but like many people, your experience in defence, whether you've served overseas or not, does tend to leave some very intangible uh, experiences and leave you with physical injuries. We briefly touched on location. South East Queensland for Australian veterans is, is the discharge location of choice. So there's a lot of competition when it comes to employment. For those of you who are not necessarily seeking employment straight away, I would think about some of the other key aspects of this. So, uh, we're looking at family support. Having a purpose is really important. Whether that's an employment, or whether that's um, being an assistant, or of some kind of service support to your family, maybe your mum or dad, maybe you've got brothers and sisters, who knows. Um, but being around that can be really important. Bear in mind, of course, as far as friends go, that your friends will have changed and you will have changed and you're not the same people anymore. So trying to reconnect with friends doesn't necessarily work too well. Now, a lot of people, especially myself, um, don't tend to do this very well. So suddenly we're thrust into a situation where uh, um, we're given a choice of, you know, you need to buy, uh, in my case, the Soldier Career Management Agency schema said, guess what, mate, you're going to uh, be posted back to Darwin and you're going to probably end up spending eight to nine or ten months a year outfield because the medics were in fairly short supply. I wasn't real keen on that at that stage of life um, and I was already quite sick, so and I'm already quite affected by injuries and illnesses at this point in time. So uh, I then said to the schema, I'll, um, I'll throw it in. I'd already done eight years, that's a decent amount of time. Um, radio. So I didn't plan my discharge very well. Um, and there were some other things that I should have done around my discharge which I didn't do. There's a whole bunch of things that we need to think really carefully about when it comes to the discharge process time. So let's go through those individually, step by step. Your med docs, these are solid gold and I can't stress that enough. Your medical documentation are your keys to any future DVA, Department of Veterans Affairs, claims. 
So, as a, someone who served within the Australian Defence Force, you're entitled to put claims in for any injuries or illnesses you may have experienced or, or occurred um, during your time of service. That includes um, reservists and all that kind of thing. So, um, lots to consider there. It's really important to document everything that you, happens to you while you're in defence. So when you do leave, you can put your claims in. Bear in mind, you know, we'll talk about uh, DVA claims a little bit later. Get a copy of your MedDocs though. This is so, so important. Ideally, uh, my suggestion to you is you're entitled to a copy. So ask your medics or go down to the health center that's on base, but you should be able to get hold of your MedDocs. Get a physical copy, in other words, uh, ask them to produce a copy for you. This shouldn't be too difficult under the newer systems, but the older stuff that is sort of pre-2010 tends to be a lot of handwritten stuff or, or produced individually. I would then go down to somewhere uh, like a big stationary place like Officeworks here in Australia and get them to scan your med docs. And that way you've got digital copies and hard copies for yourself because you may lose the, your hard copy in a house fire or a flood or something, or maybe you just lose it. Um, so having digital copies is really, really important. As I'll say, these are your keys to your DVA claims in the future. The next thing that I would be looking at is an advocate. All right, so number two, advocate. Right, these can be, there's a whole bunch of advocates who are out there. Um, most of them are not paid, I believe. Some of them are. You can access them through places like um, the Return Services League, RSL, or many, many, many other veterans organisations. We'll come into some of that a bit later. However, an advocate is a bit of a guru around submitting claims and guiding you through the process of your DVA claims. Which brings us to point number three, DVA claims. All right, so, as we've already mentioned, a DVA claim, DVA, the Department of Veterans Affairs, is responsible for any injury or illness that you've incurred whilst in service through defence. So, um, these claims take a long time to process, and my understanding is around about 18 months is currently the average, can be pushed out to, to three years. Uh, is not kind of unexpected, uh, especially the bigger, more complex claims. So, having an advocate is really important. They do this thing all the time, every day. So, whereas people like myself, who are simply a member of Defence, didn't really deal a lot with this, um, and really didn't understand it or understand the value of it. Having conditions recognised by DVA means that you are entitled to treatment for those conditions through DVA uh, in the public sector. So, in other words, you can go to your GP, you can get a referral, uh, and they'll send you off to a specialist who will look at whether it's feet, knees, back, who knows what. Whatever in injuries and illnesses that you've got, put your claims in. You're not going to get anything that you don't put a claim in for, and you won't get anything you're not entitled to. So, given that defence takes so much from us, we're entitled to put our claims in. Number four, radio. When we're inside defence, we live a very routine based life. Okay, we get up, most of us shave, clearly I don't. We do PT, we do all these things. And we have this very structured life. We have a, a life that's built on purpose. And we have a life that is built around a very uh, distinct definition. So we're defined by a number of letters, a position, and a number of uh, numbers. Okay, so you, your numbers, your what we call a PM keys number or a service number. We also are defined by our position number and position title. Radio, so PTE, SGT, MAJ, whatever it might be, um, you know, that's what defines us. 2IC, IC, whatever it might be. Um, and so once you leave defence, you've lost all of that. Things become very ambiguous, very speculative, very difficult for people who have served a long time to really truly understand and appreciate. Once we're outside of that very structured life, 
and we have a bit of money and we have a bit of time and we're not being supervised, we tend to a lot of defence members or former defence members tend to find themselves falling into some traps. What am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about excessive use of sugar, caffeine, alcohol, tobacco, drugs, gambling, all of that kind of stuff. It's very easy to fall into. So my advice to you around this is to moderate that. Now, I'm not going to judge your choices. Um, your choices are your choices. Yes, we have freedom to make our choices, but we're not free of consequence. Bear that in mind. Okay, number five, resume. Now, whether you intend to work again or not, regardless of your situation, having someone to sit down with, and you can access this through DVA, to help you put together a resume is really important. So your goals might be simply to have some purpose in life, through some volunteering and whether that volunteering or some part-time work or maybe you wish to return to full-time work and that's all great stuff that's going to depend on you and your circumstances so um, I would strongly suggest that you tap into um, the programs that are run by DVA to help you uh, get your resume up and running because this gives you a guide around what skills you have from defence which are transferable to the civilian world. And there's a lot of skills that we actually have and a lot of things that we understand really well which those from the civilian community don't necessarily have or really understand as well as we do. Ronio, number six, routine and schedule. Again, as I mentioned before, when we're in defence we have this routine um, now, it doesn't matter what part of defence you were in, undoubtedly you had routines, you had schedules, and you had things to do. Um, we, we, that's how defence works, and it's part of how defence life is so functional and so effective and efficient. Again, once we fall out of that, um, we, we don't have that structures around us to help us to achieve uh, the, the routines and, and schedules. So what I suggest to you is to write yourself a schedule. Schedule in the things that are important to you. Schedule in time with your friends. Schedule in time with your family. Schedule in time to go to the gym. Now I don't go to the gym and I'm not lecturing and I'm not standing up on a pedestal here. I've neglected myself and I've decided to turn that around. But I'm writing this video for people to help understand where some of this can be improved, including myself. Schedule in time to see things like your psychologist and your specialists. And this is super important because if you miss some of these appointments, you're gonna make people cranky. Uh, this all costs money as well. Remember when we're in defense, we don't tend to understand the, the financial impacts of a lot of these specialist appointments. Outside in the real world, um, you very much can do and if you're missing appointments or you're missing things, then as I say, people get upset about it. Rightio, again, when we're in defense, we should really have some goals and aims and objectives. It's really important to try and transfer some of that across into your world outside of defense. Think some of the things that I'm talking about here are perhaps you might wish to um, compete in something like the um, Invictus Games. Perhaps you might wish to be able to uh, run a bridge to Brisbane or a half marathon. Perhaps you w wish to be able to kayak around Stradbroke Island. Whatever your goals are, then write them down and start to find ways you can work towards those goals. And even if it's just really small increments, these are really important things to understand. Okay, family. Number eight. Family, I think, once you've left defence, uh, can depend a whole lot on what you choose for it to be. So for some people, family is very much you, the, the mum and dad that you were born with. Other people, it's not. Those are all okay. Um, but you do need people around you who are important to you. And those are things that you need to work out for yourself. But I'm highlighting family because... Um, these are some of the things that are really critical to making life worthwhile. And a lot of people who leave defense leave with significant injuries and illnesses that 
restrict their ability to function and integrate into uh, the normal world, so to speak, in the civilian context. Number nine, friends. Kind of the same thing. Um, I personally found that I lost connection with almost everyone that I ever served with for my eight years in the Australian Defence Force. There's a couple of exceptions, but not many. Um, you might find that you're able to tap into this, uh, some of your old friends, or maybe you want to make some new friends. Um, one of the things here I definitely recommend you do is start connecting with social groups, um, whether it's a fishing club or a bushwalking group or a veterans community. And we'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But um, there's, there's so much out there that can support you if you choose to do so. Connect with men's sheds or um, finding things you can do which will help you socialize with other adults. It's really important. Uh, career and purpose. So many people who leave defense can find that they can become self-employed. Maybe you choose to, to work part-time. Maybe you want to go on to study. Maybe you want to go on to full-time employment, whatever it might be. Um, these are really important things to do. Defence actually had that kind of thing around continuously uh, learning and uh, education programs and courses that they ran. Sometimes these were very annoying and frustrating because they restricted other aspects of your defence life and your career, but um, it actually provides a whole lot of purpose and people don't tend to understand that. Um, as I'll say, try and get out of defence what you can before you leave. And then once you have left, I strongly suggest and urge you to um, think about purpose in life. For those people who have um, injuries that have impacted them so much that they're unable to work anymore, then that's okay. Um, maybe you're able to find purpose through volunteering. And each state and territory has a register of all of the different voluntary organisations within their state or territory. Um, maybe you want to plug into things like, um, you know, girl guides, boy scouts, cadets, maybe it's a, you know, a bush care group, maybe it's all sorts of different things you can do. Um, there are groups out there that are helping the bushfire recovery, uh, helping to build uh, fencing and that kind of thing for farms, and these are really great opportunities to plug into. So find something that, that fits you and what you can do within your restrictions, um, it's really, really important. Without that kind of purpose, people do tend to fall into traps around um, video gaming and wasting a whole lot of time, being non-productive. And I think it's really sad, actually, because uh, a lot of that isolation and lack of purpose tends to lead to um, socially destructive pathways and defence people are overrepresented in some of these areas. Education. Um, so as I mentioned before, Department of Veterans Affairs runs some education programs which I really strongly recommend you tap into if they can help you or if you qualify for those programs. If not, um, there are a whole bunch of organisations that you can contact that are designed to assist veterans. You can get hold of them through RSL, look them up on Facebook, look them up on Google. There are hundreds of these organisations um, ESOs, I believe they're called, external support organisations, NGOs, non-government organisations, that kind of thing. So I'm talking about organisations like Mates for Mates, RSL, Heroes on the Water, Soldier On, and, you know, literally 1,200 other organisations. There are literally about 1,500 organisations like that. So um, you'll find one local to you somewhere around Australia or wherever you may be. And I strongly suggest you tap into it. Men's Sheds are fantastic. Um, there are other creative programs that are run for veterans um, in some of the major cities. And these are really good because it gives you a chance to learn some crafting skills and some other skills which are, are really fantastic. Um, and again, it, it, it gives you a chance to learn new stuff and to use your brain and function. And I think it's really important. Last three here. Okay, first one here is mental health. Defence people tend to witness or experience and be a party of lots of things that the civilians just don't understand. Uh, I can remember when I left defence. Um, 
and I came across some people who were really interested in my, my story and they were really interested in, in what I'd done. And, and because there's a real lack of uh, exposure to some of these people, um, what we tend to do is we, we tend to uh, not be very comfortable in telling some of our stories. And being able to tap into some mental health support is really important. Um, the veteran suicide rate in Australia is nothing short of a national shame. I truly mean that. Um, we're overrepresented in prisons. We're overrepresented uh, in the suicide rates. We're overrepresented in homelessness. We're overrepresented in underemployment. Um, so tapping into some mental health support is, is really important. Uh, Next one is physical health. Um, so I'm a part of an organization called Mates for Mates. Um, I go there frequently. Um, they've got some fantastic gyms. They've got um, access to psych support. They've got, uh, they run a whole bunch of adventure programs. And these kind of people, these kind of organizations, um, they're really fantastic. And I can't say enough for them because they've saved lives by the hundred. They've given veterans purpose, they've given veterans connections, they give them new skills, um, and there's so much to do and there's so much to learn and so much to be a part of and it's fantastic. So, um, going back to physical health here, uh, some of these organisations are really fantastic because they're run by veterans or they're staffed by veterans and um, these guys really understand uh, the injuries that you may have and how to still be functional, how to still train, how to still um, do a lot of this stuff around those injuries and with those injuries. So for those of you who haven't yet plugged into some of these organizations, I really strongly recommend that you uh, look them up on Facebook, look them up on Google um, and connect with them because uh, you'll find a lot of these organizations are great and they're, they're non-judgmental. Um, you know, we've, we've all got our own stories, so I really strongly recommend that these, these places are really good for veterans. Getting into some routines around physical health and so on is, is really fantastic. Radio, lastly, um, spiritual health. For some people that might mean going to church, for some people that might mean, um, you know, connecting with uh, just some online spiritual kind of stuff. Um, but our spiritual health is really important and it's, it's a big part of our lives. It's often neglected. We often kind of laugh it off in Australia because we're not a very religious people. That's okay. Um, it's, what, uh, it's about tapping into what's available for you, what suits you, what meets your needs. And um, because it may simply be going for a walk along the beach every morning. It may be going for a walk along the in the mountain trails maybe it's maybe it's 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 being able to connect with some of the podcasts that are out there uh and and you know what maybe it's not for you at this time and that's all right all right guys um i really hope you've got something out of this i really hope that there's something in it for someone um my advice from my experiences i know that other people from other trades from other areas of defense have perhaps some different advice or some different experiences, that's entirely okay. Um, if you disagree, if, you, if you'd like to leave a comment below or a suggestion, please do so. I'd really like to hear from you. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and um, I really hope you have a great day, whatever it is you're doing.